Hey, travelers! Back again. Uh, IPA day. Steph's favorite beer. Yes, just so, so frequent. She uh, just... Wow, vocab. Yeah, right? <laughs> I may be from South Dakota, but that doesn't mean I don't know words. Impressed. Yeah, Good start. Thank you. It's safe to say amongst the people in the taproom traveler, Stephanie's easily the most enthusiastic about IPAs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, I'm, I'm even going to try them. I, I would be probably the... Least enthusiastic. Least enthusiastic. Well, verbally anyway. <laughs> verbally the least enthusiastic about IPAs and So you have other travelers. actual feelings? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, I'd mm. suppress those though. Okay, that's, just like push them down. That's uh, part of being a Midwesterner. Sure, sure. Yeah. So what are we starting off with, Troy? And why don't you talk a little bit yeah, about let's, IPAs? Uh, talk a little bit about like our lineup here and how we're moving through them. Well, IPAs is originally originally a British. E uh, <laughs> originally, not originally. E originally. Uh, I poured myself maybe a little too much on that. <laughs> uh, uh, it is. It is literally. <laughs> Noon. We're sampling. We're not drunk. We're sampling here. Speak for yourselves. <laughs> uh, it's 1220. You're fine. 1220. We're good. So IPAs come from uh, most England. We're fine. Typically speaking, they were Just a, a hop forward beer because hops are a natural uh, retardant of bacteria growth in beer. It adds, uh, acts as a preserver. Uh, uh, preserver. Preserver. Sure, no. Are you okay? No, we're good. We're, keep going. Keep going. <laughs> So uh, with that, we're going to – IPAs was essentially a dead style in England. It came to the United States and undergone many transformations to what we are about to drink here, which is the West Coast IPA, which was probably the most dominant beer style in the United States and arguably still is uh, for the last decade and a half to two decades. So here is Stone Brewing, who is one of the forefathers of the IPA movement on the West Coast, San Diego. They started about 22 years ago, I believe. Their first uh, IPA was actually debuted in 1997, um, and it kind of was the, really created the standard for all the IPAs that followed, so um, they did a lot of innovation at Stone, Lagunitas, all of those uh, West Coast OGs that were kind of mid-90s ahead Sierra of the Nevada. curve. Yep. Yep. So these are the people that really created the blueprint and pushed the envelope for what a hot profile could look like. And at the time, at the time, they were considered incredibly hoppy to be almost like audacious. So the Tupac of IPAs, West yeah. Coast. And then you also, it's an interesting style because the United States grow so many good hops here. So the varietal of hops that we're able to produce here and the flavors we get from <clears> those hops kind of also help push that style. Whereas a lot of European hops tend to be more earthy. And not quite as high on the alpha acids. The American hops are way higher, more prevalent. So awesome. it's just really showcasing what we as a country can produce for beer. For those of us that don't drink IPAs, this is very pungent. It's not bad. <laughs> it's also uh, one of those, if you're not hip with the, the IPA, you're probably only going to drink one. Yeah, and you're probably not going to start with this IPA. It's right. not a starter IPA. It's, um, with a it's, a, it's a palate wrecker. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, and that's actually the hard part about sampling IPAs is that um, as far as the palate goes, it's really hard to maintain the integrity of your palate as you go through these, so you sure. kind of become a little bit numb because they are so... The um, alpha vibrant. acids kind of take out your taste buds a little yeah. bit. Yeah. We also we probably should mention the IPA stands for Indian, uh, Indian Pale Ale because the initial hops. Yeah. Uh, people brought the hops over from India back in the day, and that's where the really the style uh, got its name from. Weren't they preservatives that helped uh, beer? I literally said that oh. at 30 seconds right. ago. Probably zoned so. out. <laughs> she, whatever you said That's first, you. like Sorry. Literally, literally. I went into the... husband wife mode and just kind of like zoned. Yeah. It, it hit the, the spoiling of the beer. Yep. Yeah. Yep. You, yeah. You could, You're right. The, the idea is that the flavor was so pungent that you couldn't yeah, taste in... like the negative aspects. No, of the beer. just hops in itself preserve the beer though. Yeah. They're uh, they're preservative. What did uh, well it makes it da West Damien said at um, Summit you can hire a double double decker bus. Yes, in a, in yes, a that's a great quote. Yeah, it's um, yeah, you you can probably load it up so much with hops that you can hide a lot of imperfections in there. So, so what hop flavors are we getting in this? With one? the with the West Coast IPAs in particular, you're going to get a lot more pine. Pine became like one of the most popular flavors, and you get that a lot from Cascade and Centennial hops, which were kind of the workhorse hops for the longest time, and probably still are considered that for many West Coast styles. So uh, yeah, get nice pine bitterness, stringent. I believe, like Landon said. Um, 
And overall, you know, clear body. And that's going to become a huge factor. Yeah. You notice right now that the body on this is relatively clear. You'll see eventually that's not going to be so much. So, yeah, that's uh, West Coast IPA. It's um, probably the most powerful beer revolution or to help kick off one of the most powerful beer revolutions in the United yeah. States ever. Well, and I think you were talking about the other day. There was uh, there's not been as much change in a beer style as there's been in an IPA. Like, so you don't see, see like a constantly reinventing. Yeah. Reinventing like itself. Have a Visons reinventing themselves in the same way that IPAs are. So right. the, the important part of what we're doing here is we're showing that, okay, so this was the nineties and this was considered wild and people were like, it's, it's so intense. And it got more intense and more intense and more intense. And then the world just shifted. So we're going to Midwest now. Yeah. Well, so what used to be considered, there was a, a battle back in the day, West coast versus East coast IPAs. East Coast IPAs, more or less being Too an positive, English IPA. Yeah, more or less. Rap <laughs> battles, man. I know I know a lot about the raps. Um, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, Every, the everyone's raps. got their face in their hand. It's not great. Not rap. No. Raps. Raps. Uh, uh, no, but the East Coast style was yeah. essentially an English IPA, but with American ale. So it was a nice, big, multi-body to balance out. There were probably more balanced beers than what we're going to drink the rest of the day. But that, that style has changed. What was considered an East Coast IPA is now considered a Midwest IPA. So if you need, we should almost have like a graphic card. Yeah. As if it, as if it's like a negative Midwest IPA. Well, it's just more. Oh, more Midwest multi. Midwest IPA. More multi. Yeah. And well, for that. I, aren't for, we aren't we all multi in the Midwest? And for that, I we're mean, drinking just, a Crooked Tree from Dark Horse Brain, which is Marshall, Michigan. And if that, you can go, go. It's that, so fun. It's a trippy brewery to visit. But yeah, so and it and it is from from the first taste is way more malty. Yep, I mean balanced. I think is the word you could use on this beer. Yeah, stone stone is very hop forward. That first taste that you get is all hop. This not so much. I feel like the stone also has a little sweet in it because it's so mm-hmm. hoppy. Where this one has that malt flavor without getting into that weird sweet yeah undertone that sometimes I don't care for a lot in IPAs. Yeah. It can also be from the booze sometimes. Sometimes yep. a lot of times yep. breweries will use honey to uh to get the higher ABVs on their IPAs because that way they don't have to use as much malt, but you still need that sugar for that higher ABV. Yep. So you sometimes you get a little little residual booze sweetness from that honey fermentation. Which we'll get to more in the Imperial, but so yeah, Midwest is kind of now that there's a, a lot more prevalent uh breweries out in the Midwest between, you know, Wisconsin, Minnesota, you sure. know, a lot of our episodes have really focused on some of those hot forward breweries. Um, it's really solidified as a style. So mm-hmm. I would say, though, that ultimately, at the end of the day, breweries make whatever beer they want. The whole, like, calling a beer from a different part well, of the country. Well, right. And I, and I think, you know, the, it's kind the, of superfluous. one of the great things about Midwest is that they just kind of do all of them. Mm-hmm. East Coast, West Coast, whatever you want to consider Midwest, IEPA, you know, they they just, whatever is selling the best, that's what they're going to do. Somebody at one point decided mm-hmm. to use regions to describe these beers, despite the fact that no brewery follows those region guidelines. Yeah. But... <laughs> But yeah. here we are. And a good example of that is we're about to drink a hazy little thing from Sierra Nevada. So this is an East Coast IPA style, or what is considered a new East Coast, but brewed in California. So, you know, rules out the windows, man. Yeah. So that really transitions us to the big shift in the IPA industry of late, and that is hazy hey. IPA. So the uh, East Coast IPA has been usurped. The new- there is a new guy in town, and it is now the hazy IPA all the way. So... And this this style really emerged from the citrus craze from about two two to three years ago. Everyone got really into citrus, and we've taken it. Some might say too far because now we're essentially making beer taste like orange juice. I was just gonna say, uh, Robin would call this juice, and um, <laughs> you can see in the body a lot of them are like not light permeable, pretty much. Essentially, unfiltered beer for maximum haze. And what I, what a lot of them are start starting to do now, especially in the cities, is add fruit. So. Pineapple hazy IPAs, strawberry hazy mm. IPAs, and I mean they're doing it on the coast too. But you're seeing, you know, as far as like East Coast IPAs, a lot of them are still sticking to the just hazy. Oh, the madness! Just just the hazy IPAs, yep. but using different hops. Yes. So yeah, let's try this West Coast Breweries version of an East Coast, or sometimes often called a Northeast IPA, or New England. Not to be confused with a Nor'easter. Oh, yeah. Boy. Dad jokes. So, north. <laughs> They're still. <laughs> I hope you're all writing these down at home. Dad jokes. Oh. Essentially, this one tastes like 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 a grapefruit juice, tropical fruit juice almost. And gosh, I don't want to be disloyal because 
oh, I love my Pony IPAs, but also the... The juice. I know that some of them go too far, but for me in the summer and as far as refreshment and like a more moderate hot flavor, mm-hmm. I think it's probably actually a reaction to how bitter things got that it's kind of oscillated the other direction. And now we're kind of seeing people tempering those really extreme hot flavors and trying to complement them rather than making them just bitterness and hot forwardness. Uh, for those of you that, that have a palate like mine, this is what we would term armpit. <laughs> uh, so My armpit does not smell like this. I don't know. This, this is... Drastically worse. Maybe, maybe I. I would. Say. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I would say you know if if you're not into the, like that armpit flavor, at least that's <laughs> what I get. Uh, maybe the hazy IPA is not so great, or at least this one, the Sierra, Sierra Nevada. Sierra. Uh, Beth is giving a big thumbs up behind the camera. Yeah, yeah, she. Uh... <laughs> not a fan. Not a fan. Um, another term I've heard to describe some of these beers that I thought was really interesting that I never heard before was a caddy. So we had to actually ask at a brewery because it said there were caddy flavors in an IPA. And um, it actually means cat piss. Oh. So uh, that is actually a recognized flavor profile in IPAs. So like the stinging that you get from... uh cat urine in the, in your nose that's just yeah. just just into your that mouth mainly, huh? uh, <laughs> Good. The, the number one uh, <laughs> really selling it the oh. number one corporate uh culprit of the the caddy flavor is like simcoe hops is it and hops have such a uh, range of flavors like you get a simcoe you're gonna get caddy then you get like a citra hop it's gonna taste like lemons or limes it's it's quite amazing how much fruit flavor you can get out or not fruit flavor you can get out of a or hops just by how you use them they're kind of like grapes almost yeah, I think that's one of the really interesting things about some of the uh, IPAs that are doing fruit flavors is whether they're doing additive fruit flavor or whether they're trying to derive those flavors from the hops. Because it's actually incredible the amount of flavor that you can get from the hop varietal versus adding fruit to a beer. The hottest hop yeah. right now is probably Mosaic. And Mosaic, it smells like juice. It smells like yeah. grapefruit juice. It has almost zero like bitterness elements to it. So like uh, hops, you put that in the beer room, it's like, oh, what kind of juice are you putting? You're like, none. It's it's uh, Mosaic hops. Right. So that might be a good entry-level IPA. If you're looking for a starter IPA, you kind of want to get in. Sessions are probably a go-to because those are one uh, IPAs dark with horse. lower uh, ABV. Yep. Um, as well as mosaic hops, if you see that, that's probably going to be a better flavor profile for you. And then, you know, if you decide to get into the right, really angry IPAs like I like, then <laughs> angry meaning armpit. I like yes. them angry. Do we still have time for one more, guys? Yeah, we got we got All time. Right. We're good, we're doing uh, good. We're gonna do a double IPA or an imperial IPA. God help us. Oh, my favorite, the Voodoo Ranger Imperial. Which, at one point, I think I did the math on it. This might be the best bang for your buck IPA in the market because it has a ton of hop flavor, uh, relatively low price, and uh, the ABV level on it is relatively high. It's like 8%. So. Oh, ooh, I have a question. What? So what's the difference between a double, a triple, and an imperial? No. Is it just kind of arbitrary? Um, there's no hard, harder guidelines. Kind of like we were saying earlier, breweries just kind of do whatever they want in the United States. We're, we're not overly picky on how you label your beer but i would say a double is roughly eight percent or under whereas an imperials are mm-hmm. has nothing to do with an andy andy's back there he's saying hop additions which is actually an interesting place to talk about because i'm hop- back to hop additions so finish this question well the imperial i say is above eight percent ish give or take five or six or uh, like 0.5 percent on that whereas an imperial or a double is probably eight or eight four to eight so don't get bit by the snake. Know what your ABV is. Yeah. Don't get stung by the bee. Well, that's that's the that's a good point. No matter what you're drinking, yeah. know what your ABV is. <laughs> I'd Otherwise, say just the clarity in comparison to the hazy little deck. thing. No. Or night. The in comparison to the hazy little thing is considerably clearer. Yeah, and you yeah. can see right through this. This this almost looks if you if you didn't know it was an IPA, it almost looks like a lager. Yeah, see, it really does. Normally, IPAs are boiled. Uh, when you add hops, you do that in your secondary boil. So you're going to an hour to hour and a half in which you're boiling the beer. And that's when you do your hop additions. So earlier in the boil, you add hops. You just get bitter elf acid flavors out of it from the offsets from the malt sweetness. Whereas if you do later additions of hops and or dry hopping in the fermenters, that's where you get your aromas and your more like flavors outside of the bitterness. Um, 
Let's say we're looking at this. I don't get much on the nose. This no, no but this like you get. Nothing. I would say there's zero dry real hopping sweet in, this. in the beginning though. Yeah, it's sweet. Nah. And then kind of a it, it's not that it's not that pungent uh, hoppy flavor that you would get at the end. I mean, it's it's a hop, it's but I don't, I don't know what. I don't know what kind of hop that is. It's it's not something I've never that. Had this one, so I guess was not guess the ABV on this guy though. Someone like eight and a half, eight? nine, nine. What? Like I said, best bang for your buck. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Eight ninety nine. Literally, literally, literally meaning you're gonna feel pretty dang good after you're drinking one. And of, these. of all the IPAs we've had, this was probably the highest alcohol and the easiest drinking. So IPAs yeah. can be a devilishly hard beer to gauge flavor yeah. to booze levels. Yeah, I mean if you're if you're looking for a higher ABV IPA and you're not a huge hop person, this might be a good choice for you because the hop presence is there, but it's not forward. Yeah. It's soft. It's kind of got that like silky feeling on your tongue. Yeah. So it doesn't have that kind of like the prickly IPA. Like, it almost, it almost leaves a little bit of a soapy, mm-hmm. uh, film on your tongue. I would say a good example. Another beer like this that reminds me of is a uh, dogfish head 90, which is on that early love of mine. Mm-hmm. But that's another very malty kind of sweet beer, high ABV IPA. Right. Very, very super old drink. School, very yeah. yeah, and much like the Ranger Imperial. I mean, this this beer is uh, it's a Voodoo Ranger now, but it was Ranger Ranger Imperial beforehand. And like, this beer has existed this way for over a decade or two. So. Ooh, the last thing I want to touch on before we uh, finish up here mm-hmm. is aging with IPAs. Don't do it. Don't just don't. That's actually a fun part mm-hmm. about IPAs is there is. The pressure is to drink it as fast as possible. Yeah. Hops, don't go. Hops don't go. age. Hops, yeah. hops will dissipate within hours after putting it in a bottle. The so fresher it is, the better it is. Check your taste. dates. I know it's weird. It's kind of annoying. You feel like the like an old woman checking the milk dates on uh, jugs. but Which is which is kind of a, another reason to drink local, Yeah, I would say. Um, you can trust your dates better. Yeah, the, the farther out you are from that beer... The the probably more off the taste is going to be, especially with IPAs. Yes. Um, otherwise, I, that that kind of wraps that up for uh, for our, our IPA uh, tasting. I, th- I think it went absolutely. Steph is very happy, so <sighs> we'll do it again. And if we can make Steph happy, that's that's a good day yeah. for us. So uh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> remember, IPAs drink them drink them quick, drink them fresh. Uh, drink them local. Drink them local. Yeah. Um, as as Leosh would say at uh, Lazy Monk, buy local, drink local. He's very happy about local beers. So no, and uh, you know some of the he's never going to watch this. So it's I actually a fun thing too. I don't know if he has the internet. Whenever no, me and you so. travel, the first thing I go when we are at a brewery that we've uh, had beers from, I always go for the IPA first because that's always like like we went to Dark Horse Brewing. I was like, I got to try the IPA here because I get it fresh from the sources. Yep. yep. So if you're gonna if you're gonna do a taproom beer. Grab their IPA. It's the best you'll ever have it. Um, and there's a few Bruins right now that are doing like fresh by dates and stuff like that. Sure. Yep. Check mm. it out. And just Stone explore it. There's a, there's a big variety of hops. So you don't have to love hops to like hoppy beer. So mm-hmm. there's a lot out there. Give it a try. Let us know what you think. Um, give us some comments below or above. Yeah. I don't comments know they comments below. They're down there. Yeah. They're Troy, down there. Troy would tell you different, but they, they are down below. Uh, you can subscribe, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like, um, all of our videos, every one of them, every last one of the videos that we've done, even if you don't like them, like them. Ooh, what's the best one to watch if you're an IPA fan of the episodes we've done? IPA fans. Who's the best Uh, one? I'd say, as of now, Pipeworks is probably the best IPA. Yeah, yeah. yeah, They have have a ton of IPAs. Pipeworks was an IPA. Um, But that'll be dropping soon. Yeah. So, um, look forward to that. As far as, uh, what we have in the vault right now... Boy, I don't know. Pearl Street's got a lot of IPAs on there. Summit um, does what real well. Summit does. Summit, yep. Actually, Dangerous Man's been coming out with a lot of IPAs too. So Dangerous Man makes <clears throat> solid IPAs. So check out all of those episodes. You can comment uh, on any of them and tell us which one was the best IPAs. Uh, and then check us out on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And until next time, we will see you. Prost. Prost. Hey everybody, thanks for watching. If you like what you saw, you can click down below where there's some more episodes for you to watch. And don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on episodes that you do watch. We hope to see you next time.